What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap. Welcome to Fightful. It is March 18th, 2024. Man, we have got a crazy couple of weeks for you guys. Uh, last week on here on Fightful, we dropped our Swerve interview. Man, it was it was a good time. Over 30 minutes in person at Lexington Toy and Comic Con. Tuesday, we are dropping the first interview that Sean Spears has done since leaving AEW and joining NXT. He tells you why he left AEW, when and how he joined uh, NXT. A lot of great details there. The, the Spears-Dillinger uh, situation, his entrance music, tons of stuff there. We're also dropping a ton of other interviews over the next couple of weeks. Next week, we'll be at Squared Circle Expo. Then the week after, we are in WrestleMania week, Philly. Uh, man, I'll be at WrestleCon. Make sure you guys check that out. Tons of stuff going on. Denise Salcedo also has a lot of stuff going on. I haven't Denise. planned anything, Sean. You're stressing me out already saying everything you're doing, and I'm sitting here like I haven't planned anything. Man, I got like three wrestling bookings over the next month. People only know about one of them, though. Oh, damn. Like, you're actually going to be wrestling? At least twice. At least okay. twice. I, I'm doing Paul Cade here. Yeah, I know uh, that one. That's the day of AEW Dynasty, so I won't be there, but I'll be benefiting the Humane Society of Washington County in Jeffersonville, Indiana. And uh, I've just decided I'm going to enter every battle royal possible oh, until yeah, I win one. That. I'm going to yeah. do that. You need to post a schedule, your schedule of bookings, man, because I'm losing track of these dates. I uh, Did they just oh, – somebody said Shayna versus Masha at – uh, I thought this said, for some reason, I thought this said Shaza versus Masha. And I was like, oh, I, I would love to see that. Please, God. <laughs> but uh, yes, Fightful Select broke the news on Friday that a WWE talent would be at Bloodsport, now revealed to be Shayna Baszler. We'll brag about Fightful Select later on. Leave a thumbs up on this video, guys. Uh, some of the places you will be able to see me and us over the next few weeks, as I mentioned, uh, Squared Circle Expo in Indianapolis. I love going there every year now. It's a must-visit trip for me. I will be at WrestleCon, uh, the, I believe, the Friday of WrestleMania week at the very least. Make sure you guys check that out. The Sheraton, Philadelphia, downtown, April 4th through 7th. They have an unmatched guest list every single year. Sting, Ronda Rousey. Ahmed Johnson is going to be there for the love of God. Ahmed freaking Johnson. But uh, Sting will be actually at uh, both of the ones that I'm attending. But check it out. WrestleCon.com. Get your tickets. Muhammad Hassan. Um, Denise, I don't know if how much you know about this, but he hadn't done an interview before I talked to him in 2016. I've never met him. I'm going to hopefully do my first in-person interview with Muhammad Hassan. That one's like, Philadelphia. that would be like a must watch for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, a must watch. But uh, check it out, guys. Lots of great stuff coming up. And of course, subscribe to FightfulSelect.com. It's just $5 a month, $54 a year. We'll tell you some of the great stories that we had uh, uh, probably throughout this show. I've got some contract news that is very interesting dropping this week as well. But Denise... Uh, some contract news that we broke recently on Fightful Select was that of Matt Hardy, who was at WWE Raw tonight. Uh, last week, FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business, broke that AJ Francis, the former uh, top dollar, was there. But this week, Matt Hardy was there. Rebby posted a TikTok stirring up the stuff. Do you think it's possible we see a, a reunion there? What if he was just there to like hang out with people? He could have been. He could have been. He was, I mean, he was in a, a box though. I don't think he was backstage. Or what if you think he was just there to get people, th to get people thinking that there might be another possibility. So he's trying to get his number up over Very on the smart. AW side of things. Very smart to do. Either way, guys, let us know what you think. Leave a thumbs up on this video. Please comment on it uh, after the fact here on YouTube. That stuff helps us out a lot. Puts us in the recommended all that good stuff, and we would greatly appreciate it if you shared it on social media. And if you left us a nice review on any of the audio platforms, we are on Spotify, Amazon, Apple, all that good stuff. And if that ain't enough, get your super chats in here at youtube.com slash Fightful to get your question or statement read on the air. Our moderator, Luis, will take it down. And uh, you can also go to humperchats.com and get those in. 
Let's go ahead and get into those. SAS says, have you heard if the new production team is planning on doing anything special for Mania? New cameras, camera shots, etc. Yes, they, they are doing new stuff for every show. New vignette styles, new camera shots. We saw one throughout this show that I, I kind of want to go ahead and talk about before we even talk about the matches. But it's the Sami Zayn shot as he's leaving the contract signing and walks past DIY and Awesome Truth. Not necessarily pertinent to the content that we saw, but it's just fresh, Denise. It's just different. We saw the same formulas, the same looking backgrounds forever. This is what I talked about for so long. I just want something different, something to look spontaneous. Yeah, not only did it have the spawn, it's so funny because we all notice these things now because of how formulaic Raw used to be. So now anytime we get any sort of new camera shot or a new sort of a camera period, like everyone notices it, right? And when they did that shot that you were talking about, that Sami Zayn one, it was this continuous shot where they just kept like it was the same camera following them around doing the, the whole bit coming back and even coming back into the uh, actual ring. It was like a quick in and a quick out type of thing. And I really liked that. That was one of the moments that I really enjoyed. There was also a pan, a different pan that I've never seen them do before where they had the camera on one side of the ring. And then they did this pan until they got to the other side. It wasn't like an entire circle of the ring, but it was about half of it. I liked that. Um, there was, oh, I'm trying to remember. There was another thing. Uh, there's been a couple moments, and they do it sporadically, Sean. And I'm not even sure what kind of a camera it is. I don't know, 8K or whatever it's supposed to be. But there's always a certain part during the show where these people like literally look like they're about to jump out of your TV. And they haven't been doing it throughout the entire show. But they pick little moments, little random moments to do it in. And so I picked up on that as well. But I feel like all of these little production changes that they have made have just added to the show like tremendously like it doesn't feel like it's the same thing over and over again because at this point like everybody here can honestly <laughs> they can pretty much for they can format raw if you've been watching raw for several years you can probably format it you can probably figure out what they're going to do which direction they're going to go but at least now with these different camera shots and the way they've been doing that it has changed things up for a fresher look and the buzz that it gets when they just do a Freaking camera shot, man. Like, it's so good. <laughs> That's what I was saying. So like, we know. Kim Gray says, still buzzing after being ringside at SmackDown Friday night. I saw that you and Bo uh, were there for uh, SmackDown and got to see Cody. Very, very cool. Very glad to see that. Uh, KE775 says, how many more matches do you think get added to Mania? I'm thinking of a women's tag, maybe a Bianca match, and a Liv match. Uh, Liv versus Nia, I could see getting added. I thought it was a foregone conclusion that you saw Bianca and Tiffany, but with how hot Tiffany's gotten as a baby face, like people just love her, man. Like it's hard to say. Uh, I think a women's tag team title match hopefully gets added as well. But like, listen, I wouldn't hate to see Bianca and Tiffany team up at this point. Like that would be, that would be interesting. Uh, but as I look at things, they have 10 matches set for WrestleMania. I think we could see. I'm expecting <sighs> damage control sure. to have a match, possibly sure. uh, with uh, Naomi. Yeah. And I don't know if they would throw Jade in that. I was predict. I was thinking they might throw Jade in that as well. I don't know. I think, Since it's not looking like Bianca's interested in helping out Bailey. I think, in my personal opinion, a cap of about eight matches per night. So we'll end up with 15 or 16. I have always said I would love for them to bring back the Battle Royals. Those things can mean as much as you tell us that they mean. So if all of a sudden you say, okay, these mean something and you make it for something, then all of a sudden it's important. Because the first one they did, people were like, hell yeah, Battle Royal. They're bringing it back. It's going to be important. And then under Vince, of course, it wasn't. But um, Who do you think there's... Bianca's wrestling then if she's not wrestling Tiffany Stratton or she because it's just you keep, it's just weird you know she's missed WrestleMania. Listen, if if they ended up doing Kabuki Warriors against Tiffany Stratton and Bianca Belair, I, I wouldn't hate that based on how Tiffany's gotten over, but we'll see. It's uh, just not at the standard at which we've accustomed ourselves now yeah. to seeing big Bianca Belair matches. Like she's yeah. always in something that's you know the top of the top. 
Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Acosta says, great episode of Raw. Everything had a purpose. Uh, the Bray Wyatt documentary also announced today. Very cool to see. Uh, Bray Wyatt, um, I think it's called Always Immortal. It is. Um, it, it will debut on Peacock April 1st. We saw Bo Dallas in the trailer. Uh, it will be narrated by The Undertaker. Oh, man. So the night that we got the news that Bray Wyatt had passed, I was actually, I went to an Undertaker one-man show that night. And he actually didn't, I don't, I don't know if it was a situation where he didn't know or what, but he didn't actually mention it. So haven't necessarily heard much of Undertaker talking Bray Wyatt. And those two gained a lot of comparisons, obviously. There was the whisper and all that. Uh, I I'm very excited for this documentary. Obviously, it's one that's going to be very near and dear to to so many. Uh, but man, this is this is going to be an emotional one, Denise. Yeah, you know, they've been doing such a great job with their documentaries, but you got to think about some of the past subjects, right? You've had Cody Rhodes, you had Kurt Angle in some of these documentaries. These are people that you know, are alive right now. And you, you, you know, and so we haven't had a documentary like this where it's been a recent passing that you're watching the documentary. Right. And on top of that, it's like, I was very happy to see, by the way, that the undertaker was doing the narration for this because I didn't, I didn't expect that. And so seeing him take on this role and something that just hits a little bit harder, I think that's going to be very nice to see, but, um, Man, what can I say? It's going to be hard to watch. Will Chisholm says, any update on Asuka's knee? No, I do not have an update on Asuka's knee or anything about Asuka as of yet. Uh, I have asked, trying to find out, but don't have that information as of yet. Let's talk about WWE Raw. Reminder, guys, if you want to get your comment or statement read on the air, donate a super chat here at youtube.com slash fightful or humperchats.com. But if you want more, you want to interact even more, subscribe to FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business. It's not just wrestling news. We will, I think, WrestleMania week hit our 2,000th podcast that we have done on Fightful Select. And in addition to that, you get ask, access to our uh, Discord as well. So if you're getting sick of Twitter, like so many people are, you get access to our Discord. I'm over there answering questions. Uh, every single day on our Discord. So check it out, my friends. We had a Jay Uso promo. And he said, listen, I know the drill. I know the bloodlines here. Come on out. And he brought out Jimmy. And um, th there was a lot I liked and a lot I disliked about this promo, Denise. <laughs> what was it that you disliked? I'll start with what I liked. Because what I disliked really undermined it. Jay was like, Man, I miss you. Just just come back. And I love that. The baby face being like, I know you can be a good person. You're my brother. I love you. And Jimmy said, I never left. You left. You left the bloodline. You left the Usos. You left SmackDown. Then you came over and won the tag titles with Cody Rhodes, of all people. He said, I didn't even want to leave the bloodline. I did it because you were my brother. Well, that's not true at all, Denise. Because Jimmy was the one that left the bloodline. He was the one that left the bloodline. And then when Jay said, if you're out, then I'm out too. And super kick. And I, when he said that, I was like, oh, wow, they closed that, that hole. Wow. And then people reminded me, no, it was the other way around. They almost got me, Denise. They got me because for a second I forgot. And you want to know why I forgot? Because we went back and forth so many times. I think that's why it got a little bit foggy. But no, you're right. Because the second you said it, I was like, oh, yeah, it was him that super kicked Roman Reigns. And then remember when we had Jay's decision? Jay's decision, that whole thing, that lasted for a while. So, yeah, you're right. It was Jimmy. <sighs> Annoyed me. Annoyed me. Uh, Luis Montoya said, Taker versus Kane is still brother versus brother in my heart. Yeah, they didn't mention that. They did mention the Hardys. Uh, they did mention, um, gosh, who else? Brett and Owen at WrestleMania. Now we're getting uh, Jimmy and Jay. But we did have an absolute slapper of a WrestleMania qualifying match. Dream Ninja says, 
Actually, that was uh, that's meant for a different chat to our moderator, Luis. But Matt Hennessy sends a monster super chat and says, I'm a big DIY mark after seeing them stake the show or seal the show at the uh, NXT takeovers over the years. Delighted they are finally competing at WrestleMania. They earned it. Had their reunion last October, and uh, they got over with the main roster audiences and are being rewarded. Denise, file this one under the Sean was right. I said they had to get over in the <laughs> ring, and they would be over with the audiences. And that's what they did. That's what they did, Denise. I was I'm right. I'm not even laughing because of that. I'm laughing because I've never heard you refer to yourself as Sean. And in my head, go. you're SRS. So it was kind of weird. At first second, Whatever. I was like, Sean. <laughs> Sorry, yep, that's my name. <laughs> that is my name. <laughs> Anyways, okay, fine. What do you want? Like, and I, I think we all pretty much knew. Look, Sean, at the end of the day, anybody who goes out there and wrestles is that wrestles really well and goes out there and has an entertaining match is going to get over because people like good wrestling, right? Ah, not necessarily. We've seen tons of great wrestlers not get over. <laughs> Okay, fine. Well, if you have you, people are gonna react. People are gonna react to those matches. Okay, people go out there, they have a good match. People are gonna react. All right. Look, during this whole entire thing, I had a bunch of mixed emotions. All right, because going into this, I knew DIY was gonna win. Now I'm a big Creed Brothers fan, so I personally, I knew it wasn't gonna be Creed Brothers, but I did want the Creed Brothers to win. But I knew it was gonna be DIY. Right? That would that just makes the most sense. Great. I loved this match for multiple reasons. One, I loved how everything that Julius did, Brutus did it right afterwards. And we saw it play out throughout the entire match. Really great moments. A lot of like near falls. A, they, Even though I knew Creed Brothers weren't going to win, they got my hopes up into making me think that there was actually a chance that they were going to win. And that really, really, I mean, I felt like I was like on the edge of my seat during this match. This was really good. This was the best uh, match. This was the match of the night, maybe aside from Becky and Naya, depending on how you look at that. To me, this was my match of the night. And then it was the best qualifier. And it was, I don't know. I was just really, I wanted Creed Brothers in it. Somehow I still want them in it, but I'm really happy for DIY. For some reason, I thought the match, one of the matches last week was a qualifier on SmackDown and it just wasn't. But Which this- one? I can't remember. I think that Legato and uh, LWO. Yeah, and it wasn't. But no, it um, was. Uh, um, I forgot what it was. It was for something. Not shit is what it was for. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, Javon says, "Why different rules for the tag match qualifiers?" I'm not sure what you mean. Please, please elaborate in a regular comment, and we will we will update that. But man, because they did two... the bracket one and the bracket two thing on SmackDown, hmm. so they're. They're doing like a bracket one and a bracket two thing. And oh, then. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's okay. What it was. It was like yeah. a mini tournament, but it was. Okay, yeah. That's what that's what I was like. I knew it was for something, but what yeah, was okay. it? It was the bracket. I thought so. Yeah, it was the bracket. I was going to say, but I didn't see it on the graphic. And immediately I was like, oh, I guess it wasn't for shit. They kind of did a something. little bit of a not so great job with the with the graphics on SmackDown for that. Because it was a little confusing. I mean, I don't know what the hell is up with these tag tournaments in both AEW and WWE. <laughs> Just do a regular ass tournament. Like, Dude, for a second, I was about to tell you, oh, that was a wild card match. But then I was like, wait, no, that was AEW's tag team tournament. But then, like, with AEW, it's like, do eight teams. Just do eight goddamn teams. And on on this situation, like, I get having more having it a little bit different with this because there are so many teams that could qualify. I'm just like, damn, they're doing, they're doing play in games for March madness for the love of God. I know. And March madness is supposed to be like, it's very easy to follow, but yeah, this has been a little bit confusing, but your answer, side. your answer to that about the super chat, I would imagine it's because SmackDown is a two hour show, but Matt Hennessy, uh, I, I got to completely agree with your very generous super chat, by the way. Like, I knew that Gargano and Ciampa would get over, and the Creeds can, too. I like this Creeds. Like, they're very, very... Like, that's that's more of... That's the Brutus that you and I know, right? That's the Julius you and I know. They're just happy guys. They're happy, really athletic guys, and there's nothing wrong with that. They don't have to be surly and dickish and all that stuff. That's not who they are. They can do freakish shit, 
and they are super happy uh, uh, like about what they're doing. And I, I just think that that's the perfect approach. Love the Brutus double suplex or the suplex into the, the prawn pin. Oh, that was great. The double submissions were great as well. This was a really great match. They're bros. That's what they are. They're literally bros. Um, yeah. There was a moment where I think it was Brutus who was uh, like, I don't even know what he was doing with Pat McAfee, but they were like just chilling or something. It was really funny, but um, that's what they are. They're bros. And I think they should kind of lean into that just a little bit because they've got the wrestling down. Um, they're Everybody likes the Creed brothers, I feel. And if you don't, I'm sorry. Oh, they're so fantastic. I'm very happy for Johnny and Tommaso, though, because they're finally going to WrestleMania. Isn't that wild that they've never had a WrestleMania match? That is just... When I think about just like... I, I mean, it, I think we forget, right? Because there's sometimes where there's like you mentioned, like the Battle Royals or the multi-man matches. Like you would think so, but no. And... I don't know, but for Johnny Gargano and for Tommaso Ciampa, like this really was a moment of just like, for me, it was already a win for them to have their tag team taken seriously. And in the last couple of months, they've been taken a lot more seriously. So that within itself was a win. But the fact that they're getting a WrestleMania match out of it, like that's pretty awesome. And like for me, like even though I was rooting for the Creed Brothers, dude, they're so young, like their WrestleMania moments are going to come. They're going to have plenty of WrestleMania yeah. moments. So this moment did belong to DIY. I mean, these guys have been in WWE for almost nine years, and this is their first WrestleMania match. Not so magical. Mike says, I'd love to see Gunther and Julius clash at some point. Maybe if Gunther is still champ after Mania. Oh, God, I would love that. I would love that. Even if it's not for the title, I would love that. I'm I mad that, that I didn't think of that sooner, honestly. <laughs> when the second you said it, I was like, wait, how come I have not manifested this a lot sooner? A stag says world cup style tag team tournaments group stage into knockout stage. I don't hate that idea either. I'll tell you what I also don't hate. Dream Ninja says love evil Disney villain Candace and K775 says love the new Candace LeRae. So the big question is will Indy turn heel with her or will they split them up? I think they turn Indy heel as well cuz Candace and Indy are more valuable collectively than they are individually. A couple of notes about this match. Katana was flying across that ring. Oh my God. That was the first thing I noticed was how fast that woman runs. Like, and she's a little smaller. So she can take more <laughs> steps across that ring and she runs so damn fast. But that Candace LeRae half crab, and I love it how pleased she is with herself. And listen, I'll tell you this. She's a Cleveland Browns fan, so she's going to take a win any way that she can get it. She is going to cheat. She is going to, to be like throw banana peels. Any way that a Cleveland Browns fan can get a win, they will take at this point. So I'm not surprised. They 100% need to make Indy heal because I think that we've kind of seen this version of Indy this whole entire time. And to see her become heel, it would be fun because I want to see Candace like persuade her. I want it to be like little backstage segments like every week where it's like little by little, she starts to maybe brainwash her a little bit and turn her into something that she's not. Uh, I think they can have some fun with that. So I, I agree. I think that she should be the one that's heel. But I liked the story of this match. And it was basically that Candace LeRae took uh, the opportunity she took advantage of a situation that was unfair that anybody else would have just waited sportsmanship sportswomanship whatever the hell um just waited for her to get back up on her feet and then start the match but she was like oh hell no like this is my chance and she just went for it uh i loved the story of this particular matchup Catch fan says Triple H completely fumbled Chance and Carter. He's making the same mistakes with them at NXT. Triple H hates this team. He never uses them right. Would you say that he never used them right when they were tag team champions? Because they were tag team champions. I I mean, they're, they're going to have to find that thing that gets them over. I don't know if it will be in the ring for them. I don't know if it will be a character thing and a, a segment vignette thing. I don't think they have found that thing yet. I've been saying it since their NXT days and even on Raw, they haven't gotten the characters down. That's been sure. the big issue where it's they're cool, 
And, but the, it's weird because, okay, so why do we like Kaden and Katana? When you think about it, why do we like them as a team? One, because you have Katana, who, like you said, is going out there working at 100 miles per hour and she does all this high flying stuff, right? And Katana, because yeah. she's the one who brings the strength to the group, she's the power, and Katana's the speed. That's why we like them. But for some reason, they haven't found a way to get that across. Instead, they have them going out there being like raver girls and I don't know, a bunch of other random stuff. It doesn't feel authentic to them. And I think that they should just like, I don't know how to explain this, but like strip it down and make us get to back to the reason why we actually like this team. We like this team because they're so different, but they work together well. Okay, so present it in that way better. So I, I don't know how to to really, I don't know what the hell they're going to do, but the point is they need to emphasize the reasons why we like them because that's that's the reason. They're a cool team. They're different. I'm going to emphasize the reasons that I like NordVPN.com slash Fightful because baseball season's coming up. And let me tell you guys, nobody makes it harder to watch their damn games than Major League Baseball. All the blackouts. It is impossible to watch. Denise actually told me that her husband uses NordVPN.com slash Fightful to watch NFL games. But it's not just that. Maybe maybe you don't give a hoot about sports. Wrestling pay-per-views, bare-knuckle boxing pay-per-views, boxing pay-per-views, any, any of those. You're going to be able to get them at a price from overseas that is much more affordable than it is here in the States. Not just that. I mean, that's just... One of the features, one of the many features, you can shield your data from snoops and criminals, protect yourself on public Wi-Fi. You're going to end up saving money with NordVPN.com slash Fightful, and it protects all your devices. You can even put it on your router to protect them all through that as well. But your phone, laptop, desktop, PC, I take it on my, my uh, phone, my work phone, and my Surface Pro every time I take a trip. And when I'm heading to Indianapolis or Philadelphia, I'm going to be on the airport Wi-Fi. I'm going to be on the plane Wi-Fi, hotel, venue Wi-Fi. So you got to stay protected. And NordVPN.com slash Fightful has an incredible deal for you guys. Save big, get four extra months free, and they get a 30-day money-back guarantee. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Whew. Cody Rhodes promo. So, <laughs> let's talk about uh, the many things that Cody Rhodes said in this promo. He said, you know what? You've been calling me a crybaby, calling my fans crybaby. You've been crying behind the scenes the whole time, Rock. He said, there was that hashtag that came out, the we want Cody. They started chanting something that you didn't want. And you went to your buddies on the TKO board and you said, hey, some good uh, some good PR for The Rock. I need to save WWE. And he said, God knows we needed saving. Look at this full house here tonight. And he's not wrong because how often have you seen messages internally that I came across that was so-and-so raw is the highest grossing in history. Smackdown, every show. Yeah, almost every one. Uh, dozens over the last two years. He says, Rock, you are a lot of great things, but you're also a terrible salesman and a carny succubus. For those of you who don't know what that means, you're a whiny bitch. Now, he also once called Jericho a carny succubus in an AEW promo. Oh, by the way, he came out and saved Jey Uso earlier in the night. That was a thing that happened. So the man got like two huge pops in like 45 minutes. And Cody had said... <laughs> Cody had said, I'm sorry for what I'm about to say before he came out on Twitter. He goes, is the rock that I'm going to see going to be all that big Dwayne energy or LDS little dick syndrome? And listen, I listen. I like good dick humor. I like good sophomore humor, as you know. I just feel like a lot of the insults from every single party involved, I've been like, this is really like 1999 stuff. I've heard better out of all of them. Out of all of them. But I think that everything before that, I'm like, yeah. And before anybody acts weird, I'm not offended by this. I just think the line was like, 
eh, eh. But what did you think of this? I'll tell you, it was way better than Diarrhea Dwayne. I yeah, can tell you that that's much. That's also true. Look, I think that this promo, like, I, I agree with what you're saying with some of the shots that have been thrown. Like, some of them have been a little bit like, you know, like seventh graders are arguing type stuff, right? Sure. But honestly, though, I really did think that Cody Rhodes' promo tonight was 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 needed because at least there was sure. some... There was some, you know, dong talk in there. There was some shots that were thrown in there. He brings up his mother. And even though he didn't say anything poorly about his mother, the fact that he was like, I know your mom, that within itself was pretty good. But um, the moments that I did like from this was him basically bringing up that he went um, crying behind the scenes to the TKO board. I thought that was uh, something that I feel was easy to sell to the people and make them think that that was a legitimate thing. So for that reason, like I loved that when he called him a whiny bitch, <laughs> I thought that was kind of hilarious. And then the little, little dick syndrome, I thought it was funny, but I'm going to laugh at that. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't take too much to make me laugh when it comes to stuff like that. So I, I thought the, <laughs> some of the shots that he threw were really hilarious. I wish he would have went full white chicks with the you want to talk about mothers, but oh. he didn't. He didn't. Uh, I was Will about Seth... to say, what is he going to say? I'm going to write a letter. <laughs> I'm going to so, I mean, write he... a letter to TKO. He, he was like, you know what? I brought up my mom in a promo, so it's completely fine for you to do it. And uh, he's like, but what you said to my mom, like, she's not scared of you. And Will says, I love how she say, he said that my mom beat up an undercover cop. She's not scared of you. Yeah. By the way, I need more more information on that. I'm going to try. He just, he just dropped that. And I'm like, wait a minute. What now? Your mom did what? <laughs> like, I'm more afraid of Cody's mom than I am of anybody involved in any Fair. of this. <laughs> Kim Gray says Cody's promo was so needed and epic. Joe Compton says the Cody promo was on point. Cody is desperately needed to get his gritty, grimy, edgy side to him. That was the best Cody promo of all time. I wouldn't say it was anywhere near the best Cody promo of all time. I thought it was a good Cody promo, but like, I don't know. I guess I've seen him be legitimately edgy in the past. Like I, I thought that him busting the throne was more edgy than this, but like, again, it wasn't bad. I'm just like, I see what they're doing. They're working on each other's level with the diarrhea, Dwayne, little Dick syndrome, cross dresser you're wearing your wife's clothes type of stuff like i, I see what they're doing Do you they're operating on the same plane where john cena who was he calling poopy head oh, fuck. i don't know he was i mean i've seen people called head. rudy tootie booties and i feel like if we could <sighs> if we got through poopy head we can get through anything else like this was Perfect honestly wait i prefer this over I mean, cody let's... getting over last week's promo where like Cody got emotional. And so it left a really big opening for the rock to like make fun of him. Like no one wants to get made fun of for showing their feelings. Like that's embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess so. Come on. That's very embarrassing. Sean, you make fun of me all the time. Yeah. And is it not embarrassing? <laughs> like, well, you, I'm... you will never like, no, like that's why like, you don't let emotion out. So no one can make fun of you. Nobody. What? What? I don't let emotion out. What do you mean? No, I'm saying you shouldn't let emotion out so people wouldn't make fun of you. Or maybe you should just be nice to me, Denise. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking in general. I just I just think you should be nicer to me. I am right. nice to you. I sent you a piñata on your birthday. It doesn't get nicer than that. And you didn't even use that, it. That's what makes yeah, me most it, mad. I. You know what? So my grandmother lives at the house that I used to live at. Um and I, I saw it this past weekend. <laughs> I saw the pinata. <laughs> uh, and I went, I was like, where the hell did that pinata come from? <laughs> I completely forgot. John, what the hell? I literally sent you the candy. I sent you the pinata. All you had to do was put it up, get a stick, and wham. That was it. That's like so much work. John, you've never hit a pinata in your life. I was trying to bring How joy you know? to your life. Because I, I know, know this. You're from Kentucky. I know for a fact you have not hit a piñata in your life. I have hit a piñata in my okay, life. Okay, when? When? Tell me. When? I what piñata? I think you maybe uh, underestimate the, the Hispanic demographic in you're, our area. You're you're stalling for time and you're beating around the bush no, so that you I'm won't just, answer the question. I, as a French, I, to I bring you genuine joy into your life, 
by sending you a piñata? I just didn't want to destroy the wonderful gift you got me. But I mean, like, legitimately, That's like... That's the point! <laughs> No. Sean, you know I have a big ass scar on the back of my head from the time that I fell hitting a piñata. My head hit the steel steps of my house. <laughs> I, I, I'm not no. even kidding you. This is legit. I blacked out. You know what? For the love oh, of the piñata. God, Denise, why? I'm just telling. Go back to your house and I gave you that like two years ago, Sean. Yeah, I know, but still. <laughs> Cut. Hmm. Break the damn piñata. We got some super chats and humper chats specifically about the piñata. Uh, uh, no, I, I wish. Jenny Wheeler says Cody's story has been pushed to second in the Rhodes family story. I need more Mama Rhodes. Yeah, we're gonna need some backstory because apparently she already finished her damn story a long time ago uh, with this with this uh, undercover cop. Tom Townsend says dong talk. Keep it clean, Denise. <laughs> CC Bonbon says, will Cody or Seth reference Black Adam? I wonder if The Rock will allow that. I mean, he didn't. Oh, wait, no. He buried Baywatch. That's he true. buried Baywatch. He gave a Moana line. I think Black Adam should be thrown in there. Oh, I see a chat that says everybody knows what Cody's best promo is. Oh, we sure do. People think that the Sean Ross story is BS. It's not. <laughs> he looks so little there. Uh, K775 says, have you heard of WDB is expecting Rock to stick around post Mania? Because they definitely have singles match potential with Cody and Seth. And with that Roman Reigns fellow as well, I would imagine. Although I don't know if I ever want to see The Rock as a babyface again after this. Like, I thought he kill he's killing it. Uh, but um, they expect some loose affiliation and some further appearances. I don't know when. Like, I don't know if that means, like, the next night or, like, years down the or shouldn't say years. It won't be years. Months down the line. He's on the board now. He's a part of the family again. I would say closer to Netflix. When the Netflix thing comes up, he's got to be on those shows, I'm assuming. Yeah. Jay Frizzle says, SRS Denise, what do you think is the plan B if Roman, Cody, or Seth get injured night one of Mania? I think WWE has a break glass in case of emergency plan. Yeah. What pray that you can book the lord jesus christ to come down again i don't know i guess because uh, i that would really suck if like roman or cody got her or seth because he has his match against drew but more particularly roman and cody i think they would try to do like some sort yeah especially if it, if cody got hurt ooh, that'd be big maybe you could do the turn and the rock appears Damian Priest is there with a briefcase. You could switch a title somehow, but yeah, I mean, Roman Reigns ain't losing his title on that. But with the Drew Seth thing, maybe. Ugh. Let's not even talk about this. Let's and I, I mean, I love, I love Damian Priest. That would just be bad for Damian Priest because it's not a fair position to put him in. No, he would get booed. The Diddy, well, he's gonna he get booed heel. either way because he's a heel. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah, the Diddy Mon says. Uh, for tonight's swear jar, because everyone getting their cusses in, legit LOL for them muting holy shit chants during the main event. Yeah, you're on USA Network. Don't don't mute that. Why didn't Rock perform his 2001 hit Pie on Friday? Oh my God, I forgot about that. I know a, all the words to that song, man. Do you? That was on volume five of the CD. <laughs> And that was my, my first God. CD that my uncle bought me. And so I remember playing that and like learning all the words and singing along to it. But I didn't know what he was talking about in reference to Pi at the time. So do you know that Wyclef Jean released a single with uh, The Rock in 2000? He was in the video and everything. What it, single? It, was called it doesn't matter. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it was on. It got like a little bit of play on MTV. But it, was, it wasn't a good song. It was not a good song. I do at all. like the pie song, though. I'm not even going to lie. It's a fun oh, song to brother. sing along to. <laughs> CC Bond says, What and when were the all time highest peak views on a fightful live stream? Um, Luis says he believes it's Vince's first retirement. But the reality is, it was probably an MMA show. It was probably Habib, Conor McGregor after they had that huge brawl after the fight. Like, I mean, we used to cover way, way, way more MMA, but that was, there weren't very many live post shows in MMA then. And, uh, we went, me and showdown Joe, I believe went live immediately. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, 
it was it was yeah probably and and the all-time peak views in general um i think a video i took of aj styles saying i'm married bitch to scarlet um there's one that hit a million views with cody rhodes and um the Eric Young speech to TNA, the locker room, did like 300,000 views a few weeks ago on YouTube. Just YouTube. I'd have to, to break down some other ones. The MJF uh, interview is our most viewed interview ever, though. Jonathan says, if I was in charge of WrestleMania, I'd book Sean and versus Denise at WrestleMania 41 in a pinata ladder match. Ooh! I would win that where shit. We got to bust the pinata to win? Yeah, I would win that. That sounds like something Vince Russo would book. And let I would me tell win you, that. He can't shut the fuck up about us, so I'm sure he'd try to book that too. Scott Lopez says, sorry I'm late. The only way I keep up with WDB is my two favorite wrestling personalities, SRS, and I." And he says, I guess host number one. Or he says, guest host number one. What? what? I thought I was step <laughs> host. Damn, step host. Rock hard um. Joel Wood says, Besides Shayna, any idea who else from WWE is going to get booked for Bloodsport? I know another person they reached out to, but I can't say. Uh, they also, FightfulSelect.com, had a bunch of backstage news on this about how it came together. Josh Barnett called Triple H himself, and then I found out he had also called a couple years ago about Jessamine Duke and wanted her for, for it, and it didn't end up working. Andrade backstage with Judgment Day. What do you think happens here? I don't know. I kind of want, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking that Andrade and I first thought that Andrade and Dominic were going to like, I don't know, break off or something. And I don't know. I don't really know where this is going, Sean. I'm interested think? though. They, they got my interest. They got my interest. Ricochet defeated Dominic Cruz. Ricochet had that camera on the entrance that you mentioned. In Simmons says, skim through the show. I like that Ricochet seemed to be on some type of revenge tour. Not a fan of the possible Chad turn, but can't be mad. You lost three times against Gunther. We'll talk about that momentarily. But Ricochet getting a good win over Dominic. Clean win. Uh, you, <laughs> Pat McAfee almost fell out of his chair. This is Ricochet should be beating Dominic. This one made sense to me. It doesn't hurt Dominic at all. He's still going to be over no matter what. Ricochet... He's he's like Casey, where he goes out there and he goes at like a hundred miles per hour. Um, yeah. that was literally him during this match here. Like, I feel like this match, I liked it more primarily just because Ricochet was just he was just all over the place. I don't even know how to explain it. He was just doing things where like I feel like I hadn't there were some things that he did in this match that I feel like I hadn't seen him do in a while. And I don't know, I feel like Ricochet always just comes up with something different. And that was pretty much like my biggest takeaway from that, but it wasn't like that long of a match. It was just very quick, but Ricochet, man, he, there's gotta be like, so last week, the qualifying match, I, the, sorry, the gauntlet, I thought he did really great in that. And I know they're going to run that match back again with JD McDonough next week. I'm actually looking forward to it. Yeah. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Jay Miller says, any update on Kaiser since Vinci had a dark match? Very puzzled why Imperium wasn't included in the tag team qualifying matches. Um, I'm I'm still looking into it. A lot of times the, the in, injury info is a lot more protected these days than it has been recently. Because, I mean, they're, they're also a little bit more cautious. The days of Vince are, are gone, so people aren't asked to tough it out like they used to. Um, so that that's... That's good. But yeah, Kaiser hasn't wrestled in a couple weeks. Vinci wrestled tonight. Do we see Tama Tonga before Mania, at Mania, or after Mania? I think after Mania. Listen, I love Tama Tonga, but he's never been on TV here in the States to some extreme degree. So I think he'll he'll probably be introduced on TV. Mr. Acosta says the Rocket Barclays is going to be crazy. Us New Yorkers love heels, and I do think there's a chance Cody gets booed there. Also, give Rock a full hour. I, f I mean, he gets like 30 minutes each show. Feels yeah. like it. <laughs> 30 yeah. minutes plus like a 20 minute social media promo that same day. So, so, so I you saw just kind of get an hour, kind of. So I, I saw some irresponsible aggregation of one of our Fightful Select reports because we had posted on there. We're like, hey, it was only scheduled for one segment. We didn't post whether it went over time or under time, but somebody had aggregated it and, um, 
people had implied that time was cut on matches. No, we posted the time in relation to the number of segments that they had. And Gewirt said the segment went 36 or 30 seconds under its allotted 20 minutes. For context, internally, The Rock was listed as segment one, and it got 20 minutes. Garza and uh, Humberto's match was listed for two segments. It got 11 minutes. So that's why people probably assumed that. But Gewirtz followed up on Cody's promo because he was name dropped in it. And he said, oh, uh, you can thank The Rock for that final boss name. And Gewirt says, final boss isn't anything I came up with. The Rock calls himself that because he is that. However, I was the first to tell him about your spectacularly stupid, goofy-ass dog. God. <laughs> and Pharaoh wore a bandana today that said, The Rock is a cat. I thought that was kind of funny. I thought that was funny. I know it's corny, but it's funny. Yeah. Awesome. Truth defeated Indu Cher. This was the best I've seen Indu share, maybe ever look. I thought I don't, they look the same all the time. I, <laughs> I can't even Veer, tell you the difference in their matches. Veer has a phenomenal elbow drop, and I mean like a legitimately impressive elbow drop. Like go back and watch it. That dude got air. And I'll tell you what I liked about them tonight is they're on TV with two guys calling the show that are allowed to talk about them that are allowed to talk about how he's got the million dollar arm Disney movie made about him. Another one was a kickboxing champion. You're allowed to talk about that. Uh, awesome truth sort of lucks into the win, which I thought was good. Cause our truth was like, man, I feel bad for whoever faces them. That was good stuff. This is fun. You're getting awesome truth in there. Uh, but I just did not care about this. I, I'm fine, sorry. Really. I'm sorry. I just did not care about this. And I don't think I'm as big of a fan of what is it? Awesome truth as everybody else is like, I'm a little bit left out here. Like I'm just watching from the outside because I'm just not that interested in seeing them win the well, tag team titles or continue this. Like I don't want I, them to win the tag team title. I want truth to get his mania moment. Cause I don't know how many more opportunities he'll get. And he's never won a mania match. He's like, Oh, and eight. But do you want to see some footage of The Miz after he was singing his part of the R-Truth What's Up song? What happens if I say no? <laughs> I don't get it. What? He seemed so proud of himself. Just so proud of himself. What's this clip from Chris Jericho? It's Play it him, again. That was uh, pretty funny. Yeah. CM Punk says he'll be at I WrestleMania. Play it again, Sean. It was play it funny. Again. Yes, play it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> that's in between him singing uh lines from a song on i had never seen song. that it was it just hit today it's like literally like <laughs> i'm sorry that's hilarious oh man uh anyway if you are suffering from little dick syndrome you know fightful and blue chew have been at it a long time maybe you've been at it a long time maybe you're lacking that motivation Maybe you're lacking that confidence. You don't think you have what you once had. Blue Chew is here to get you there. BlueChew.com and the code Fightful. You'll get your first shipment free of what? Well, it's a chewable tablet that has the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So it gets your performance ready to go. It's prescribed online. It ships straight to your door. You do an online consultation. And if approved, you'll be back to that main event level performance. Sometimes it's not even about performance. It's about that confidence. And Blue Chew is going to make sure that you have that. Blue Chew and the code Fightful. Your first shipment free. You just pay $5 shipping. What is there to lose? BlueChew.com and the code Fightful. Blue Chew and the code Fightful will have you like... <laughs> You need to send me this file. <laughs> I'm, I need to download it to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I specifically sent that to Kyler with timestamps. I said, Kyler, I need these three seconds. And he just hit me with the, okay, LOL. This needs to be a GIF on the internet. Like, if it's not already out there, it needs oh, to be a GIF. man. Oh, my God. <laughs> So we have Zane and Gable backstage. We'll get back to them. But Gable's like, oh, th thanks for the props, man. I appreciate it. Because Zane says, I haven't been tested like that in a long time. We'll get back to it. Because we got the contract signing in the ring. 
Gunther, you know, he stumbled over his words a few times, but listen, ain't his first language, no big deal. Um, but the contract signing happened. It was, it seemed fairly uneventful to me, but the match is going to slap Denise. Well, I mean, are we going to get to the Chad Gable part now? Because I feel like. We'll talk about that after this, but anything of note there? Because, I mean, I think the main story was the Gable thing. Yeah, because I was going to say, because it was the, the segment before was when Chad Gable had told Sammy that he didn't believe that he could beat Gunther. So when he was went after, out there. I no, Sean, it was, it was after, before. Right? It was before. So it was he, before, and then okay. they had a segment afterwards, and he asked him, right. why did you tell me that? So it was like this contract signing was was sandwiched oh, in between well, yeah, those yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking yeah. about what like what happened afterwards. Like, uh, and Gable, Gable's like, I don't think you can beat him. I don't think you've got it. I thought this was phenomenal. Matt Hennessy says, would like Chad to train Sammy on how to beat Gunther since Chad's the only person to beat him since his IC reign. But he hasn't really beat him. He hasn't pinned him. He hasn't done anything. Like, if I were Sammy, I'd be saying, no, you think I can't. I know you can't because you haven't repeatedly. So my only thing, my only issue with this was, and it's really it's a small issue, but it's the same thing they did with Sammy when he was going to face Roman Reigns. It was the same thing that I can't beat him. You're the underdog. Yes, I can beat him. No, I can't beat him. They already did this story with Sammy, but they did it with Sammy and Roman Reigns. So is this going to be his story for like every big match that he has? Um, I think until he wins one. Okay. That's kind of how I, mean, I felt where I, I personally just felt like it was a little bit of, I've heard this already. I've, I've seen this song and dance before. Just Marquis says Gable IC title win after Raw and Raw after Mania. I, I, if you want to make Raw after Mania be something, then yeah. I think they really, really need to hammer home, especially Raw after Mania. SmackDown after Mania, at this point, it's like a full week after WrestleMania. So I feel like SmackDown before WrestleMania is now like more of like the, you know. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, if they, they would sort of make that a thing, I would love to see like maybe some little debuts there like and you could have some some things integrated and then some, have some debuting talent pop up like in backstage stuff on mania as a result uh john black says swerve the pinata is filled with blue chew <laughs> they would probably sponsor it at this point um will chisholm says the single tracking shot was great it's like when the car maker follows the players off the court oh it was so good it was so good and so was this drew mcintyre promo I loved what they did here. Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins have built this damn match. And Drew McIntyre has gotten himself hot to the point where I've got to see him win this. He has to be right about this. He's been right about everything. He has to be right about this. And he even says it, Denise. He's like, listen, you are addicted to the spotlight. And that's a you problem now. He's like, I tried to tell you I wanted you 100%. You didn't listen to me. You're a dumbass. That's your fault. Not my problem. If you get hurt night one, I'm going to wheel you in. I'll carry you in. I do not care, but I am leaving with that title. And he says, it's not what I deserve. It's what I've earned. And uh, Seth says, oh, you know, you're just like me. This is mainly a Drew McIntyre highlight. I felt, but because really, all Seth could say is, yeah, you right. That's about it. Because Drew is right. Drew's been right about everything so far. Drew definitely won this promo off for me. I think that he's the one that's been hitting, that he's been making the most sense, which is funny because he's the heel, right? So he's not technically supposed to be making too much sense, but he has been making some sense during a lot of what he was saying. But I just, I feel like, I just, I feel like Drew McIntyre, Right now, this whole feud with him and Seth Rollins, it doesn't feel, it, it still feels like Seth Rollins is not 100% invested in this particular matchup. It still feels like we have them in different directions. And that's been a little bit of my issue, whereas like Drew McIntyre, his whole focus besides burying CM Punk whenever he can is this matchup because he wants to become world heavyweight champion. And so I do feel like it comes like the energy is a lot stronger from Drew McIntyre 
in this whole story between him and Seth Rollins. And so I'm rooting for Drew, man. I'm totally rooting for Drew. Like, this is his time. They need to do something with what he has going right now because it's really cool. And <laughs> the same thing I say every single week, CM Punk needs to write this man a thank you letter. Oh, yeah. Keeping him freaking relevant. Big Hero Chris says, just got home from Raw and I almost lost my voice. I, I'm... <sighs> Drew McIntyre is not going to probably, well, he's not going to close WrestleMania like, you know, is ideal. But man, that guy should be so freaking proud of what he's done. Because when you have your moment, it's really hard to heat yourself up again to get that moment. Because with so many wrestling fans, it's what's next? Okay, what now? Okay, what now? Okay, who's the next one? Drew has been that guy before, and he very clearly is the guy to hold that title right now. He really is. And it's so different, obviously, from like the first. It's so different from anything he's been doing before and from when he was champion. Check out our friends at Bet Online AG. All the odds we get are from Bet Online AG and uh, some pretty pertinent tonight's uh, WWE Raw. A reminder, you can actually bet on pro wrestling. We have had several winners. I, I can tell you two right off the top of my head. We told you guys, bet on Sting against the Young Bucks, bet on Samoa Joe against MJF. Both of those hit. We were so glad to have winners on those as well. But some big title changes that Bet Online AG is predicting right now. Drew McIntyre winning the title from Seth Rollins. Cody Rhodes winning the title from Roman Reigns. Uh, Bailey winning the title from EO Sky. Some big title changes, but they are predicting that Rhea Ripley Gunther and Logan Paul all retain. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Kevin Owens is actually one of the biggest underdogs. He's the biggest underdog on the show right now. And I think he could actually end up winning that U.S. title match because I'm like, how often is Logan Paul going to be around after Mania? I guess we'll see, but check him out. Bet Online AG, trusted for over 25 years. They got, they got the earliest lines. You can bet big, the fastest payouts, and the industry's best bonuses at Bet Online AG. We will continue to monitor these odds. And like I said, I will uh, hit you up with, uh, I'll be very, very firm if I am of the belief somebody is like definitely going to win and I think they're an underdog. But right now, I think all of them look pretty, pretty fair. Rock Hard Joel Wood says, in your opinion, which is not to be aggregated, what percentage do you give of Drew staying in WWE? I'd say about 80, 85%. And yeah, I, I just want to say this. If you are out there posting on your Discord, your Reddit, your Twitter, your threads, SRS said he gives this percentage. You need to go touch consensually a pair of butt cheeks real bad. Real bad. Matthew England says, Denise, what's the best steakhouse in LA? She don't know. Actually, I just went to Gus's Barbecue in Pasadena. A steakhouse? It's a barbecue. No, joint. but they have really good barbecue there. I liked it. They had steak there. I'm pretty sure they did have steak. I'm pretty sure they did. New Day they defeated Alpha. New Day defeated Alpha Academy. This one, we knew this one was going to happen. Sorry, I'm still thinking about the steak. What did you New say? New Day defeated Alpha Academy in a oh, okay, yes, qualifier. Yes, yes, yes. We all knew this was going to happen. Fine matchup. I don't know what else to say about this. All the tag team qualifiers were pretty straightforward when it came to what the outcome was going to be. Pretty straightforward here. Uh, not a lot to this. You have a Nia Jax promo. Liv confronts Becky backstage. I like that they're keeping that loose affiliation. Like Liv is not in that title picture, but... Uh, Becky Lynch defeated Nia Jax. This, th this, especially the ending, ruled. The last um, two big spots that they did was the best. Yeah. And uh, listen, Nia deserves a ton of credit for being as, as good as she has been throughout this run because she has had a, a very, very good, like, four or five months at the top of the card. Like beating be, beating uh, Becky Lynch, competing against Rhea Ripley, facing Becky in another match, then facing Becky in the main event here. That manhandle slam through the table was incredible. 
And then, like, I know Becky just does a leg drop, but it was a damn famaster through an announce table off a ladder is what it was. I'm going to pull up a picture of it, yeah. Denise. And I'm going to pull up the picture of Pat McAfee's reaction to oh, it Oh, yeah, well. his little dance that he did. <laughs> no, this was great. I mean, the manhandle slam on the table was great because of the, uh, you know, you the size, right, of Nia Jax and then seeing her and Becky. But this spot here off the ladder, <laughs> everything was 10 out of 10, man. Like, they nailed both of these spots, like, perfectly. And both of them made me think, like, when she hit the uh, the, the manhandle slam, I thought it was over. So, like, they, you know, you know when it comes to a, a last man standing or a last woman standing, the final moment really has to make you honest to God believe that this person is out for a 10. Anything less, you're going to be like, I didn't buy it. You have to absolutely sell it. And that table spot, I thought it was over then. So I wasn't even expecting the 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 freaking leg drop off the top of the ladder. That within itself was like the cherry on top. I wasn't expecting that, was that extra. Phenomenal. And what I like about this is it, it still keeps kind of going with what Rhea said about Becky. She's like, you're looking for an out. It, it's the parallels of Rollins and Becky, but Drew thinks that Seth is addicted to it and will just go in hurt. And he's like, so be it. Rhea thinks that Becky is looking for an excuse as to why she gets beat. Broadway Joe says, Tony's going to pay Becky so much money this summer and it's all deserved. I mean, listen, if she hits free agency, she's going to get, I would imagine, the the biggest offer of any woman in pro wrestling history. And I do want to address that because um, I know PW Insider said that Mercedes is getting at least eight figures over like multiple years. That could put her among the top because Charlotte is right there as well. To, to my understanding... Charlotte also has uh, a combined eight figures over her deal as well. And I have not yet heard the dollar amount uh, for Mercedes. I've heard a lot of people sp spreading rumors, but we don't get to operate on that. I know what she was asking for in December, but well, I don't Charlotte know. Or, um, I mean, you mean uh, Charlotte or Mercedes? Mercedes. Mercedes. Oh. And Mercedes was asking for more. Uh, I don't know what she got yet, though. I know it was a multi-year deal. I know it was a very, very good deal. I know it's one of, I know it is at least one of the biggest in women's wrestling history, and um, good on them. I saw a lot of weird discourse. I saw a lot of weird people on Twitter today, and I mean, every, every day since this story broke, honestly. I but I mean, think about this. And this is a conversation I had with a, a very highly paid woman in in wrestling as far as on the field goes with athletes pro wrestling women are paid up there among the highest on the field athletes not like the tip tip top like we're talking top 10 top 20 excluding you know endorsements and stuff like that because there are a lot of women uh in sports whose endorsements blow them out of the water but as far as like technically on the field stuff I think that's cool as hell and good on them. They deserve it. Uh, and I'm sure that women like Charlotte and Mercedes and Becky are looking at this and they're like, let's close this goddamn pay gap. Let, let's do that. Let's, let's do that's this. That's the goal, man. And, and now like I, I saw some people saying like, Oh, I bet some, some women are mad at them. Yeah. I bet a lot of women are really happy that these women are like, yeah, I want to be making this amount of money as well. You can't justify paying me two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year anymore. You're gonna to have to pay me more. So good on them. Right, of course. And it obviously depends. Everyone has different star power, different, you know, all of that. But I mean, now the fact that this can happen. Like, there's no reason to be like jealous because at least now you know it can happen and it can happen sure. for you. Patrick says, any WrestleMania tip off SRS? Not yet. Not yet. And yes, WrestleMania or Wrestling Twitter is a wasteland. Subscribe to Fightful Select. Go to our Discord. But Rep I can say everyone's always burying Twitter. And it's everywhere. It's not just Twitter. It's Instagram. It's TikTok. It's Facebook. It's all the social media apps. I feel like TikTok. I mean, I feel like Twitter gets the, the brunt of it all. But it's literally all the apps. I will say there are certain apps that reward it the most. Uh, Facebook rewards misinformation the most. 
because there's no oversight on misinformation. Um, I would Instagram say Instagram allows the ugliest language. I would say Instagram is the worst with people just stealing content, just stealing people's I feel other like people's shit. More content on Facebook. That too. Oh, I mean, hey, birds of a feather flock together yeah. with those platforms. Yeah, that's true. Um, TikTok is. Listen, I'm not saying that it's a dumb platform, but as far as like dumbing down a lot of the content, you get that there. You get that yeah. there. I'm not, I'm not calling it. You know what I mean? Like, no, it's but very, I've, it's, look, I've got onto TikTok and I'll look and I'll see like the dumbest thing ever. And it got like millions of likes. And I'm like, how? Like, this is so dumb. Yeah. Um, threads is okay, but their algorithm is all messed up right now. I don't like right threads. Now. I never liked threads. We didn't even give them. I tried giving them a chance, but I was like, blech. But Twitter actively rewards people just being dipshits and getting replies. Like, that's it. That They actively reward that via engagement monetization, although it's getting less and less. Never have I been so happy to see the payouts on Twitter decrease. But, like, listen, we see our work get not aggregated. Aggregation is a part of, of wrestling media, and I could go on forever about that. But, listen, if you're just one lonely guy aggregating our stuff, <laughs> and putting it out on Twitter and not providing opportunities for other people. Like I love what I love what Russell Pierce does. They have a complete network. They have podcasts. It ain't one person sitting there like, let me copy and paste this and get my engagement bucks. It really does reward that. And um, I think you should. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm partial to original reporting, but Elon ain't going to pay that money forever, guys. No, no. Happen. And none of the other apps are paying like nearly. And you have to have some crazy numbers to be making money on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, yep. all of those places. We got the Bep Jr. says Becky deserves to be paid good after the bangers for the last three years. Being back after having her beautiful child pay her, Nick. Oh, I'm sure they will. I mean, that's the thing. Like she's even better in the ring now than she was before. Wild. Ninja, yeah, Dream Ninja says Rock can kick rocks. Becky versus Rhea was the real night one main event. Got chills for that face off. Great shot to end a fun show. Listen, if they said, hey, you know what? We're going to put Becky Rhea on main event. I wouldn't be mad at all. I don't think they will. But I, if The Rock, you know, <laughs> if The Rock made an executive decision and goes, let's do that, I, I would I think it'd be very selfless, but I don't think it's going to happen. And I'm also not going to say, oh, he needs to do that. No, he's a huge star. Just Marquis says, who will be the headline inductee for the Hall of Fame? It'll be Paul Heyman, who was also there and was not allowed in the ring. He apologized to Cody. We didn't cover that. There, there wasn't a lot there. Uh, but uh, they agreed that they would that Roman and Cody would meet one-on-one -on -one in the ring. When are we going to see Triple H, the real final boss, on screen to confront The Rock? Let's pretend. Let's not pretend like Cody didn't mention mention Brian. I mentioned that. Um, it's hard with the the Triple H stuff because he can't get physical, but maybe he has somebody that can. Denise, what do you got? Nothing. Just kidding. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, YouTube.com slash Denise Salcedo. That's the place to be. All of my contents up there. Everything. Every single day, there's something going up there. YouTube.com slash Denise Salcedo. Guys, I'm dropping interviews this week. Sean Spears, um, Shayna Baszler, Chris Danger. That That's one that uh, a, lot of, a lot of YouTubers are going to love. We got uh, Jade coming up. We've got uh, Evil Uno with Joel Pearl. We've got all kinds of stuff coming up. And then at Squared Circle Expo, WrestleCon, WrestleMania week, I'll be getting a ton more. Please subscribe to FightfulSelect.com. Leave us a thumbs up. Until next time, we're out.